for the show. Yeah, nice to see you. On the program this evening, Kevin Klein, a, a multi-talented, uh, very personable young movie star Lovely is with chat. us this evening. Yeah, and uh, Tina Turner. What more can you say Man. about Tina Turner? Great. And how about last night's show? We had uh, Rod Stewart and Ron Wood on. They were great yeah. last night. Yeah, yeah, so things are going, they, hey, things are finally beginning to go our way here tonight. <laughs> uh, let's do the uh, top ten list and then uh, bring out the... Also, I don't know if you happened to see the show last night, but we had a flying dog on the show last night. It was not a prop, it was not a toy, it was an actual flying dog. They're now available. You can get them out of the Philippines in Manila. Really? Yeah. They bring they them put, in? They say they're combining them with some kind of genetic pet research they're doing in the Philippines, and you can get an actual flying dog. Scared me, I'll tell yeah. you that. But, but the good, they say they make pretty good pets. Uh-huh, really? They're, yeah, they're having better luck with, like, uh, Airedales and Canadian geese. It's some kind of... <laughs> Merging. Yeah. Is the, do we have the flying as long as? Oh yeah. Here it is. Here's the, this is an actual flying dog, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is not a. Listen. There. Look at that. Okay. Okay. That's not a toy. That's not a gadget. You can have one of these. Now they're a little pricey. They're a little pricey. They're about eight hundred sixty thousand dollars. Wow, that's so much. But mm. but they say you know as they start to mass produce them, the price will come down. Uh huh. They scare me. Scare me. <laughs> the uh, category tonight: top ten highlights of Roger Clinton's first one hundred days uh. as the uh, presidential brother. Uh, uh, President Clinton celebrating one hundred days in office. Highlights now of his brother Roger one hundred days in office. Here we go. Number ten. Wore shoes for the first time. Number nine. Sometimes gets a, a free pen after they've signed a law or something. Number eight. Historic all-night keg summit with President Mitterrand's brother Stewie. Number seven. Was on TV. Oh, boy. Number six. Finishing slightly ahead of that smart-ass seven-year-old during the White House Easter egg hunt. Number five. Was a runner-up on the game show Towel Off. <laughs> Number... Oh, my. Number four, uh, seeing Joe Namath host uh, the Bud Bowl. That was awesome. Number three, uh, keyhole sighting of Hillary using her epilady. Number two. They say as long as you keep the shots up to date, the flying dog makes a wonderful pet. Good with kids and can carry, yes, in answer to your question, a small amount of luggage. Can really. Uh, number two, finally getting the rubber mouse away from socks. And the number one highlight of Roger Clinton's first 100 days, higher approval rating than his brother. There you go. Hey, hey. All right. How are we doing? Is everything all right? Everything on time? Good. Our uh, first guest is an Oscar and a Tony Award-winning actor. Wow, you can't beat that, can you? Oh. Won an Academy Award and a Tony. Cool. Uh, his films, of course, include uh, The Big Chill and uh, A Fish Named Wanda. How about The Big Chilled Fish? Did you see that one? <laughs> Missed that no, one. Oh, that was a great film. That's another one of those yeah. hybrid things. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, his newest effort, entitled Dave, opens on uh, May 7th. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Kevin Klein. Kevin! Welcome back to the program, and again, thank you for your uh, time, and congratulations on, on a great career, and a, what looks like another uh, great movie. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Was that all in one breath? Well, more or less. It's how's your, how's your voice? Somebody said you had laryngitis. <clears throat> I am just uh, recovering from yeah. uh, laryngitis. <clears throat> I've been talking nonstop for about three weeks about this movie. You've been out promoting it. Promoting myself, promoting the movie, promoting, uh, you know, good times and mm -hmm. fun for give, all. Give people a sense of of what that is like, uh, why is it required, and how much of it do you do, and do you enjoy it, and how does it go? See, I, I don't think it is, I think it does nothing. Uh, I think coming on this show or doing interviews with various <laughs> newspapers is, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm <laughs> I don't do this show, I don't, never, never. <laughs> what I was saying is, I, 
I don't think it. Uh, I think it's all very important. Uh, <laughs> Because, it, didn't, uh, it didn't seem like that's what you were no, getting at. I, I, I get, I've been doing this for a long, for three weeks now, yeah. nonstop. You, you get know? a little punchy, don't you? I, you lose your voice. Mm -hmm. You go, and I, I thought it was, I thought it was from just talking and catching a cold, but I think it's psychosomatic. I think it's from being asked really stupid questions <laughs> that I can't answer. So now, you go, but you answer them anyway. So pretty soon your body says, "You're lying. You're lying." <laughs> It just cuts and it shuts, off. Down. It just shuts yeah. down. Well, you'll tell no more lies today. Yeah. But it's now, coming back now, and I think it's just from talking to you. Who who asks the stupid questions? Well, <laughs> that's a, that's a good question. Um, everyone asks me that question, yeah. but I'm used to it now. No, uh, the you know you the, you sit in a room. They say we're doing a press junket. It'll be three days nonstop. Six various cities degrees. around the country. You sit in a chair, and then a TV interviewer comes in and does their five-minute midday Cleveland show. Right. And so it's the, the TV writer in Cleveland who asks the stupid questions. Yay, Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland, every, they come from all over. They yeah. come from Europe. And then, they, and then the next day, after you've done 600 television interviews, you do uh, 400 print interviews. Right. And you sit around a table, and they all ask you the same questions. Okay. But now you know that they're going to misquote you. G give us a, an example of, of the high end of this and the low end of this. What would be, as a, as a, a filmmaker, as an artist, as an actor, as a, uh, a thespian, what is, what, is a good, what is a good question? What do you like to hear? What is the kind of thing you respond to? Well, a question that sort of bespeaks a certain amount of knowledge about the craft mm -hmm. or um, it's not just downright insulting mm -hmm. in terms of just what it is we do, uh, we actor thespians. And uh, <laughs> slash actor slash thespians, um, no, um, but um, well, you, you get questions like, okay, now in this movie I play two characters. I played the president, a fictional president, not our current president, a fictional president, and then I play a guy who looks just like him. Mm -hmm. Good casting, right. don't you think? And <laughs> and uh, I played the president for just for like three or four scenes. Then I played this guy Dave, who is. Uh, who just happens to look like him. Right. So I get questions like, now, did you ever have to play both characters on the same day? I went, yeah, sometimes I'd shoot a scene yeah. in the morning where I was the president, that afternoon I'd be Dave. Sure. Did you ever get them confused? <laughs> I'm like, oh. said, well, no, I, you know, they always told me before I go, go on, you know, <laughs> which one I'm playing. They write it on the call sheet so I don't. What do they think? Yeah. They, they think like someone holds up cue cards and, and the director tells us what to do, and then we just kind of, they wind us up. You know, we, yeah. we do a little work. We memorize a couple lines. But it, it seems to me like you, you might get confused. <laughs> because... <laughs> There's a good chance, you know, I... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you don't get confused. Do you, you get confused? Do you ever get confused, like, when you're doing this show? Like, wait a minute, is this me... Dave doing my show, or is this me driving to work? <laughs> you ever suddenly start going... <laughs> well, if that's stupid, it's like... I, I think I actually have signaled for turns while at the desk, <laughs> and... Yeah, they just bring out another guest. You know, it, it actually is a little like picking up hitchhikers, now that you mention it. You know, driving to work, hey, there's Kevin. Hey, Kevin, get in! Drive into town, do us a show. Uh, your lovely wife was here a couple of weeks ago. I saw oh, her. Oh, yeah. she's the best. You're the luckiest man in the world. Know, yeah. You and kissed he, her hand when uh, she came well, in. That's all right. I can kiss her hand. Just relax, will you? Well, I've just... <laughs> what, a, what a maniac. Well, no, I just never... It was sort of old world. It was kind of elegant. Nice. Well, thank you. I just hadn't seen you do that ever before. <laughs> all right, buddy, get out. Get out of the car. <laughs> Uh, and you have a great uh, little son, Owen. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. All right, we have to do a commercial here. We'll uh, come back with Kevin Klein, kids. <laughs> Kevin Klein, a fine actor and a gentleman, is here, and also later uh, Tina Turner. And uh, you probably know this, but if, if you don't, uh, Kevin is married to a uh, wonderful actress in her own right, as they say, and a delightful woman who has been a guest on this program many, many times and is here tonight in our audience. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> say hello to the lovely Phoebe Cates. Phoebe, where? There, there she is.
Wait a minute. Could, I, could you play that back? Wait, that was, let me ask you a question. That, wait a minute. Was Do that, you sometimes get confused about where your wife is, Kevin? <laughs> could you pull over right over here? Uh, <laughs> where, who's, who's watching our she's, child? She's up there. Which the child is here, here at the daycare center. Who is that guy that's next to her? That's a lookalike, right? He's here with a lumberjack. Mm. Uh, He's kissing your hand. Let's talk uh, about the, uh, the, the film. What kind of things did you get to do? You're playing a guy who gets to play the president, so what kind of things did you do for well, the film? My research, a lot of people have asked me this, and it's a great question. Uh, <laughs> and they said, what did you do to research, you know, because you got to play the president? But in fact, I play a guy who is pretending to be the president. So there's no research? No research yeah. at all. I just had to stay stupid. Because <laughs> I didn't want to know too much, you yeah. know. So that was my research. Except the one thing I had to do is... Um, as the guy impersonating the president, I'm asked to go in and throw the inaugural first pitch. Mm -hmm. So uh, a few days before we actually actually started filming, we went up to the Camden Yards. You know, that's a Baltimore. great ballpark, isn't it? Great ballpark, yeah. wonderful ballpark. So this must be very exciting for you because I know you play ball yourself. Well, I played outfield, yeah. and now the the script says that he uh, uncorks this fabulous curveball that just goes burning right across the plate, <laughs> and I go. I'm an outfielder. I can throw it. You know, let me, can I run out to center field and just throw throw a guy out at home? Goes, no, it doesn't work. The president no, is taking stupid. a guy out from deep center. Yeah. Okay. Right, just just start rounding second. And like, Go. And then, no. so they said, no. And I said, well, I got to learn. You know, the form at least and learn how to throw a curveball. Can you track someone down? I called Warner Brothers and they said, yeah. They called me back the next day and I figured they'd get me some high school or college ball. Sure. You know, okay, show me the just grip. Help and you out. Yeah. He said, well, we got Mel Stottlemyre from the Mets. He'll be out at Chase Stadium at wow. 4 o'clock tomorrow. Pitching coach out there. Yeah. yeah, he's the pitching coach for the Mets. And so I thought, oh, great, you know. So I, so I went out there, and Mel, he caught about 100 pitches, and I could barely move for about a week. <laughs> but he showed me the thing, and then uh, on the day, I got out there. And so how was it set up? Was it, was it before an actual game the Orioles are actually yeah, playing? They, uh, they had, in the paper, they had asked everyone to come a little early mm -hmm. if they wanted to be in the movie. They all showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wanted to be in the movie. It's amazing. Uh, I mean, as if they thought, oh, that, well, I'll stand out, right? Yeah. There's only 50,000 of us. Uh, it's a great scene because there's 50,000 people. And they were, Ivan Reitman, the director, went out and said, okay, now, let's pretend this is the, the really popular president. And you love this guy. And when he comes out, give him a nice, you know. I come out of the dugout, and 50,000 people stand up screaming. And I'm thinking, you know, this is acting at its finest because... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're they're pretending. I'm pretending. Uh, we haven't even started. I haven't even met the camera operator yet. Yeah. It's like two days before we actually start. You know, no one's had time to even meet anybody. I'm out there pretending to be an actor who knows what he's doing, playing the part of a guy pretending to be the president <laughs> who also can throw this fabulous pitch. And I go, I, you know, they've given us three minutes before the game yeah. to do as many takes of me trying to get it over the plate. And I went out there, and you know. And everybody's cheering, and I did my thing, you know, and just psh, right into the dugout. I mean, <laughs> why, just why? The form was great, but the, the result, then the second pitch hit somebody in the stands. Fine, the third pitch, you, the, the audience is now booing, yeah. right? <laughs> but I ran out and you know, got it right, over, right into the. So that'll be, that'll be a great scene. Are you pleased with how that scene came out of the film? It looks great. Film? It yeah. looks like I really know what I'm doing. All right, so when, now, when, when people go to see that, that'll be interesting for them now that they have the little backstory yeah. about it. They'll hey. know that there were two takes before that where I, in fact, screwed up. Screwed up. Yeah. Pretty bad. <laughs> Was it a little embarrassing for you when you had to walk out there and pretend like, oh, here, here I am, actor boy, delaying the big league ball game? <laughs> it, was and... so, it was the fakest moment of my <laughs> life. <laughs> See, because there were like seven cameras, so wherever the ball went, it didn't. They needed to get a nice reaction yeah. to me, so yeah. I'm like throwing it, hit some guy in the stand, and I'm going, yes, like I just, <laughs> like I just threw this fabulous pitch, just right. It's, it dropped a season ticket it's, holder. It's all mad. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the movie, uh, Dave, uh, you, you know, you've been in a lot of interesting, uh, some quirky, but always very interesting motion pictures. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Uh, anyway, Dave <laughs> opens uh, on uh, May 7th, and uh, me, myself, I, as a matter of fact, I'm open right now. Uh, <laughs> good to see you, Kevin. I it's hope it's a great hit you. for you. And say hello to Phoebe. I shall. Kevin Klein, here's running back here with Tina Turner.